Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about a seat kebab with a quick flatbread and we did a yogurt salad. We also have a special guest. If you guys wanna see this, here we go. All right, before we get started, I just have a exciting announcement. Special celebrity guest on the channel today, let me introduce you to Jess or known on Instagram as Jess Soul Food. As you guys probably know by now from following me from the past, I love to do things sometimes above and beyond, especially when it goes to different uh, cuisines, backgrounds, um, and history of food. I'm a history food buff. So this is a great opportunity for me. We just had a chance to go to an Indian grocery store. She walked me around and obviously I'm just like a kid in a candy store. It is so great to be here and just to, I mean, I love any outdoor types of cooking and this recipe is kind of a combination of Indian with Middle Eastern influences and I think that's the great thing about global culture is there's no one singular, you know, what is American food, what is Italian food, like it's a mix of different cultures and so I'm excited to show you everything here today. I think because of my background as a personal chef, cooking on uh, TV news, working behind the scenes on Chopped, I've gotten to learn so much more in the culinary world. So I'm excited to share the bit that I know from my corner of the world. I just kind of want to like replay that again. So when <laughs> she says that an ingredient goes in there and you're like, oh no, it doesn't. It's like, this is the perfect reason why she's here. <laughs> kind of like to validate what cooking's about, right? You have your own experience along with high-end experience, but you also have your own background. And that's what food to me is all about. Adding your twist, adding your family's twist, or adding that one ingredient that somebody says, absolutely not, unsubscribe, and you're like, add it. It's what you love to do. Right, <laughs> what you like, and every home has their own recipe for everything, so. It feels like we need those like halo effects coming out, like, oh. <laughs> All right, to get started, we basically have a three-pronged approach. We have three main ingredients to this dish. We have the meat, shish kebab that you guys might know it, or if there's a different language. Sea kebab. Interesting, I would have never guessed. Uh, <laughs> he the, struggles with the English language, so. <laughs> Especially the Appalachian style language, like that's even worse. So, uh, and then we're going to do, that's meat on a stick, yep. basically tra roughly translated. And then we have the, um, uh, the, the flatbread. Um, and then we have the topping, which is going to be more of a vegetable and yogurt style. Yes. I'm, I'm super excited. Let's go. Yeah. If you're not familiar with fresh ginger, you simply just take a spoon and you can go with your backwards or forwards and you're just going to take the skin off. Let me show you a trick about garlic. It really actually depends on the bulb and how old it is. But if it works, you take the tip of the knife and you stick it in the bulby part and then you kind of twist. And when you do that, it splits it. And then when you split it, the peel should come right off. Now that is a tip I can get behind. <laughs> we go through so much garlic. Oh, wow. Did. That was easy. That was easy. No smashing necessary. You don't need to be violent and smash your garlic. <laughs> they always say about something about science. You got to be able to replicate it. Let's see. I mean, the problem with it is uh, scientifically, it depends on the garlic. If it's too old or too young, it may not work. Jiminy Christmas. Wow. <laughs> Learn something new every day. We'll be using that from now on. So we're going to take all of our ingredients and I'm going to chop it really finely. But there's a certain order. And this is my number one tool in the kitchen to make sure everything is the right size. Because you don't want chunks of anything because it's going to make your meat fall apart. Okay. So first you put the ginger. So you just mince that well. Then instead of taking it out, since everything's going in the same pot, I just keep adding. So now I have all the garlic. Is it safe to say that ginger and garlic is very popular? They, the holy trinity of Indian cooking is garlic, ginger, onion, and then sometimes chili peppers. I can live in that holy trinity right there. <laughs> and the thing is, as you keep adding, that garlic and ginger are scraping again, so it continues to get finer and finer. Makes sense. If you want it more hot, you would have kept the ribs. Would you ever substitute the jalapeno for a hotter, hotter pepper? Yes, totally up to your taste. Okay. I would do jalapeno if you want milder. Okay. But yeah, whatever, you know, if you want to go really crazy, do the uh, Thai chilies. 
We saw those in the grocery store. Yeah. Yes, I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> I don't know if I would consider the jalapeno mild though. Typically, when you're talking about my wife's palate, it's more like black pepper. <laughs> okay, and then the onion. <laughs> so you just wanted to cut the onion so it fits in here. Let's try it. This might be a little too big, and we're going for a mince. The other trick people do is they'll make a bunch of this and then put it in ice cubes in the freezer, so then you just pop out and it's ready to go. Oh, that's a good tip. Smell that. It's my love language. <laughs> the easy part. Okay. You dump. We put that in and you just mix it. Perfect. Okay, after putting all the vegetables in, now we're gonna put in the spice blend. Normally, you would use the whole thing for two pounds of meat, but because we're trying to do it with less heat, I'm just gonna actually use half the pack, which I think is about like one and a half, two tablespoons. Okay. It's interesting that, uh, you know, we talk about why I love food culture so much that even as a busy person as yourself or even as a whole different background as my Appalachian style background, <laughs> you chose to use a pre-made ingredient versus like the whole thing from scratch, which there's a lot of people out there that think we need to grow a wheat, grow a cow, grow a chicken. Yeah. So what, what what's the... I grow my chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I do this is because there are 10 different spices in there. Spices lose their flavor over time. Right. And so one of the things in there that I never use is pomegranate seed where that's ground. And so if I buy a big thing of it, one, it's going to cost a lot more money. It's not going to stay fresh. I'm not going to use it all. So I like using mixes because it has all of those flavors and they're fresh. Good point. Now, obviously we chose uh, ground beef today, but traditionally it's probably more lamb. You could do... Uh, in fact, the part of India that I'm from, we use beef all the time, okay. but in northern parts of India, they use lamb or goat. In fact, goat is more popular than lamb. Oh. But I say, eat what you like. That's what we say, too. Yeah. <laughs> we just try to give them the, the canvas. You know, we create our own canvas. I'll tell you this, that I haven't told a lot of people this. One of the hardest things that I think that we found in YouTubing and or social media is the fact that we diversify our cuisine so much just because my love for it is it's hard to get every single ingredient for every single dish and have it all the time. There's right. a, eventually your pantry gets full, your refrigerator gets full. And although I true, I do try to do a fair and realistic recipe style, there are some ingredients where like, ah, you know, how important is that one ingredient versus right. having like every single thing. So when it comes to that, there are definitely, like you mentioned, spices that I would just never, ever, ever use. And that's definitely a balance. Like how many ingredients can you buy throughout the week to make one dish that just sits there over a period of time? Exactly. You want to make sure all the vegetables and spices are incorporated in it. And then you put it on a skewer. Any special way? Because I've seen them online. Like, you know, you put the meat in your hand. Put the, yep. You I've seen it. it. I've just never done it. And a lot of times they'll make it longer and thinner, right? So it cooks quicker, and you get more surface area for more char. Oh, which would probably work better for griddle cooking anyway, right? If you don't have the skewers, don't worry about it. She mentioned that we could actually make them in the shape of what we would call hot dogs. So one method I just found, maybe it'd be interesting to you, is we um, are using the side of a sheet tray, and I'm just letting it work up the sides, keeping it flat, which helps spread it out. And using the side of the sheet tray, just kind of like roll it up for you. So flat. And then you can just move the meat around to try to get as even as possible. And there we go. So all the meat's done. We're going to throw this in the freezer for a few minutes while we prep our other ingredients. And I wouldn't worry about that on the hot dog side. But for the skewer side, we want that meat to adhere. When it's griddling, you notice that we have a little flat space because obviously with a griddle, you're not getting that 360 heat. You might need a little bit more flat surface area. So that's what we're doing. So in the freezer it goes until we're ready to use the meat.
half teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of cumin, one cup of Greek yogurt, plain, mix well. Now that it's mixed, we're just gonna set this in the refrigerator, let all those juices from the vegetables come out along with those flavors marrying together. And then we're gonna start on our flatbreads. We're gonna get started on the flatbread. What I'm gonna do is have self-rising flour, another shortcut. So you're gonna have two and a half cups of the flour. And to that, we're gonna add a pinch of salt and it can go up to, it's according to your taste, up to half a teaspoon. Full fat, plain yogurt. So to the two and a half cups, we're adding two cups of yogurt. We're gonna start mixing it up and we will add flour as needed to form a dough. So as it's getting shaggier, you'll see that it's pretty wet. And so then we slowly add in more flour. Flatbread is actually found in many cultures and the use of white flour is really not native to India. And the concept of naan, which is baked traditionally in a tender oven, is actually taken from the Middle East. And if you go throughout the Middle East, you will see all kinds of flatbreads there. So this is an adaptation of that same thing. Once it seems dry enough, then we switch from this paddle to our hands. The reason why we're using yogurt is because it acts as a tenderizer, so your bread is actually soft. So is this very similar to a naan recipe? It's just the difference in how in the heating the, vessel. <laughs> this is the shortcut version. If you were making traditional flatbread, like naan or any other, you would use yeast, but because of the baking powder in the self-rising flour, it's the shortcut method. And again, that's kind of the theme of this meal is how do we get the most flavor with the least amount of time? These are some ideas. Traditionally in an Indian meal, you would have rice and bread, usually a lot of rice and just a little bit of bread, but we're gonna do this in a wrap situation. So we're only gonna have bread. And one thing, another thing really quick is we learned about curry. Uh, we got a chance to actually see the curry leaves mm -hmm. fresh, like grown, like I, I did not think that, but um, the word curry, as you explained to me, was actually from a, uh, the word curry. Cutting. Thank you. <laughs> K-A-R-I. Correct. And curry just means sauce, but yep. curries can mean a vastly wider range of flavors. Right. You would probably typically think like I would of a traditional, not, not traditional, but a curry having like the same flavor profile because when you go to order it, especially from East Tennessee, wouldn't you think that <laughs> it just, is it not kind of like the same flavor profile? What's interesting is the concept of curry really was brought around the world by the British. So if you go to Japan, Japanese curry is totally different than Indian curry, which is different than Pakistani curry, which is different than Sri Lankan curry. And even you can go to Germany and have curry worst, which is a sausage that has curry flavor in it. While Jess is working the magic on the flatbreads, let me show you, you guys know I love new gadgets. So this is the advantage of stepping out of your comfort zone and going to a different store or grocery store, something like that. She expressed to me that they actually make these in different sizes and they actually serve things like in different Indian restaurants in them. It's copper based. And what I like about them is unique enough where we're just gonna set it on the griddle and just make a very simple garlic butter. Garlic butter, as the griddle warms up, we're gonna melt it and uh, control the temps. You guys know that the handles will get hot, so we'll use tongs for that, but I absolutely love these little jokers. These are absolutely fantastic. Alrighty, so you can see right here that our smoke is rolling. It means we're above 450. 
And basically what's gonna happen is Jess is gonna keep making flatbreads and I'm gonna be in charge of cooking them. So as I'm flattening it out, you'll notice I oiled my bench. I didn't flour my bench. And so Western cooking, generally you flour your bench, but in India, they always oil it. One advantage is that you get that flavor in the bread, but also it's easy to roll out. And then when you put it on your griddle, it won't stick right away. Perfect. Good tip. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Beautiful. Beauty. Just brushing that flat bread with a little of that garlic butter. One of the good things about making flat bread, you can make a whole bunch ahead of time and they freeze really well. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Especially, I always feel like if you take the time to do something, you want to get rewarded. Right. Griddle's still rocking and rolling, medium, medium, and low, because we always need that space to move food over if we need to. So we just take them out of the freezer about uh, 20 minutes ago, and these are gonna be the hot dog style. So I'm gonna go right in the middle. You know, actually, when they put it in there, they take the kebab skewer, and it, they kind of stick it in the coal. So there's actually, no, it's not touching anything. It's kind of suspended in the coal, and then the fire, or the heat is all around it. Wow. Ooh, yeah. But it still gets, you know, dark on the outside because it's so hot. Mm. Another big difference between Western cooking and Eastern cooking is for flavor, we really rely on spices and herbs like cilantro and curry leaves, as well as all the dry spices. Whereas it seems like Western cooking, they rely on fat to enhance flavor. Oh. That's fair. I can see that. Like I was about, I was about, at first, I thought you were going to say portion control. What you, <laughs> what, what you wouldn't be making, what it end up making. <laughs> <laughs> I will take this over a ballpark prank any day. Yeah. <laughs> killed. Hashtag killed. <laughs> we were talking and she was telling me how much butter the northern part of her state area, territory. Northern India. Yeah. Uses. And so we had this butter left over and I said, well, can we add the garlic butter to this? And she said, ah! Absolutely, which is music to my ears. And pretty much every savory Indian food, every dish, has garlic in it. So like I said, garlic, ginger, onion is in everything, so adding more garlic feels very natural. As our meat finishes up, something I've been wanting to do is just add that flat bread right over top so it gets a little heat from the griddle but all that fat and stuff from the beef comes up, so hopefully it just makes that a little bit better. All right, the meat's done, and the idea is simply, looky there. Looky there. That's slick right there. <laughs> Almost like we've done it before. You have, not me. <laughs> I would say I've eaten it more than I've actually made it <laughs> now i'm a fan of the sauce i love the yogurt i love everything inside of it so i'm going to add a little bit heavy for me and you as know, we say the yogurt sauce is also custom built so if you wanted you could have put chopped jalapenos bell peppers this one is very cucumber heavy just like tzatziki is cucumber heavy would you add pickles i would not add pickles because okay. the interesting thing is while we're there we noticed that the word pickle is used a lot, but it does not mean that oh, it's actually... Oh, sorry. Okay. The Indian pickle, which yes. the Indian word for it is achar. Okay. And achar is kind of what we would think of as hot sauce over here, but it's chunky because it's made out of different vegetables, like a mango pickle or a garlic pickle. And so, yes, you would add like a little bit of it in there to give it a little kick. All about that. Boy, that looks amazing. 
<laughs> That's a big daddy one. <laughs> Jess, what are you going to eat? We need to get a knife. <laughs> I mean, that looks fantastic. Yep. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Jess? <laughs> mm, the spices. I think what I like about it is that you got the cooling effect of the yogurt salad. And do you feel like the meat is hot, like spicy hot, or just flavorful? I do, but it doesn't go past like the back of the mouth. It's not like it's so hot where it just like rips your lips. I love it. Mm -hmm. I, lo I like there's a unique flavor in it that just draws me to it over and over again. I love it. And I liked I it the first time I made it. And this is just shows you like there's another way to go about it. I love that spice mix. It really, like you said, just speeds up that process. Uh, you don't have to have a ton of ingredients. Um, this is strong. Like I've, what you made a comment earlier faster ways to impact food to make it stronger like stronger flavor and this is one of them i, I agree 100 like this is you take one bite and you immediately think oh wow that's good hey let me try no <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> good we're gonna be visiting that indian market again why don't you just keep eating it like the flavor mm. still like it's just mm -hmm. as strong now as it was you know the first bite mm. As always, yeah, I just want to personally say thank you so much. Like, it really means a lot. I love food. I love the fact that we got together. I think it brings cultures from all different walks of life, nationalities. As long as you're open to it, it just bridges the gap. It's something that I crave all the time, which is just explore food. So thank you so much for taking your time for being here. Thank you guys for hanging on. I know it's a longer video than normal, but there's so much more information out there that we'd love to share with you guys. And don't forget, check out Jess at Jess Soul Food on Instagram. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share with your friends. Peace. I'm chowing down. You have to excuse me. This can get ugly. Just, just makes the best we'll chai see if I can also. Match you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a winner. Mm.